In this video, we're going to build a ChatGPT clone that doesn't use GPT and that is trained on your own data. To see the difference, here's the response when we're not feeding in the data. So we're asking what's Mind Studio and we're getting a very generic and incorrect answer. And this is an example of when we are using the data source. So what is Mind Studio now responds in the proper way with actual factual information about the platform. This application is using Claude3 IQ, not GPT, which is a faster and cost efficient model. Now let's build it together. Click on the plus icon at the top left corner and then create AI. We can start from generate prompt, click on next and describe the behavior of this AI. This AI is going to be an internal knowledge consultant. So let's say assistant, which is the AI, will help human, which is the user, answer difficult questions. So let's write assistant will help human with all sorts of tasks, a very generic description. Let's click on generate. And we're getting a prompt here. You can change this prompt whenever you want, and you can add additional prompts in the automations tab. My studio also named our application WorkPro Assist. You can change this name whenever you want by clicking on the app name and here in name. You can also brand your application by disabling the MindStudio branding if you are on the pro account and you can have custom styles to change background color and font family. Now, before we can train the AI, we need to go back to the main flow and in the automations tab. What this AI does right now, it's simply start and then navigate to the chat terminator. The chat terminator is exactly like your classical ChatGPT, Perplexity AI, or Microsoft Copilot interface. It's a chat, and on the other side, you have an AI that will answer. The problem is that this chat doesn't have any knowledge about MindStudio, so we need to feed it some data to understand more about our platform and be able to give factual information about the tool. To make this happen, you need to take data from some other place. This could be your knowledge base, it could be your blog, or it could be a Google Sheet file with a lot of information about your company. In our example, we have a Webflow website with our blog. The blog contains a lot of information about MindStudio, custom tutorials, webinars we hosted, etc. So it's a very good place to extract a lot of information about the tool. So what we did is export all of the blog articles we have on Webflow, which contains the article title, the status, the creation date, so the AI can also be informed about when the article was published and clearly the actual content of the article. We saved this as a CSV and we have to upload it here in WorkPro Assist. To do that, click on data sources and the plus icon. Let's name this data source blog post because that's what we are uploading. Then click on upload files and my studio blog posts. My studio will extract the content of this CSV and it will vectorize it so that the AI can understand it. And this is done. This particular file has 84,480 vectors. When you use a vector database, you're basically going to query it for a specific meaning. You're going to search the database to get a response back. You can test the query right here and you can also use it inside of the automations. Whenever you query one of these data sources, you're going to get a certain numbers of responses back. Those responses will be relevant to the query, which is what you're searching for. Imagine this is your personal Google search database, and whenever someone searches something on Google, they're going to get some sort of response from your data source. If you click on this little arrow icon, you're also going to see how the AI is going to look at your file. You can see the preview, the extracted text, and the raw chunks. The raw chunks then get converted to raw vectors, and this is what the AI will work upon. But don't worry, you don't need to actually understand what's going on here. My studio is doing everything for you. This is 100% no code. But if you are the type of person that wants to know exactly what's happening, you can do so here. Now let's go back to the main flow and we need to turn on RAG. RAG is a strategy to do exactly what we just described. It's going to query the data source for a specific word or sentence. To do that, 
click on the chart terminator and select strategy rag. There is a small description that actually describes what this does. Automatically query data sources to provide additional context. Let's zoom in a little bit. Here, we now have to select the data source, blog posts, and the results. The results represent the number of responses we're going to get. Imagine searching on Google one time, two times, three times. You will get some slightly different results, especially if the query changes, and this is going to build up on all of these different responses in a bigger prompt. And this is going to be the template. It says, use the following information as context for your response. And then, based on the information above, answer the following message. So what this does is query the data source for whatever the user enters in the chat. Then it gets a response, and the response is going to be saved in the query result. Let's publish this up, test it out, and everything will become clearer. For example, let's ask, what's my studio? Let's open the debugger by clicking on the question mark at the top right corner and then show debugger. You can see there is a step here, step six, that says pre-processing message with data source. And you can see the same template as before. Use the following information as context and this is a snippet coming from the source. In this example, let's go ahead and select maximum results two and test it one more time. Let's click on open published app and let's ask the same question. What's my studio? You will notice this answer is a little bit better than the previous one. And that's because we're passing in more data. And when we pass in more data, the AI has more data to work on and can come up with better answers, especially if you need data for these answers to make sense. Now let's go back to the editor and take a look at the debugger. The debugger will show you exactly what happened up until this point. So for the first interaction, this is what the resolved message looks like. The resolved message is what we actually sent to the AI for processing. You can see we are passing in some data from the data source, which is passed in the context. And we are saying, based on the information above, answer the following message. The following message is what's my studio, which is exactly what we typed in the chat. The same thing happened for the second interaction, but this portion here, the context is much longer, about twice the size. The reason is that in this case, we are using two snippets instead of one you can get as many as five snippets every time you query a data source. And RAG in the chat terminator is not the only way to use RAG. If you want to learn more about it, we are going to leave the link to a webinar recording of our full workshop on data sources in the description below. Finally, you can see the total prompt usage is 2,055 for this one and only half for the previous one at 1,069 units or tokens. The last thing you can do here is change the model. Right now, we are using GPT 3.5, which is the same as ChatGPT. That was a very good model one year ago, but it's not top tier anymore. So if you go in model settings, you will see a lot of different models you can choose from. The Claude 3 family is a very good family of models because it spans across all different cost efficiency cores and quality outputs. For example, Claude 3 IQ is very cheap and very efficient, Cloud3 Opus is very expensive and incredibly smart. It's actually the state-of-the-art model right now across the board. Cloud3 Sonnet is a good average. In this example, let's select Cloud3 IQ and let's set the temperature to something around 0.4. The temperature controls the amount of randomness in the model's response. The closer to zero, the least creative the model will be. So each answer to the same question will yield pretty much the same response. If you go all the way to one, it will be complete gibberish. And let's increase the maximum response size to 4096, which is the maximum for this model. Every model has different temperatures and response size settings. Now let's click on publish and try it one last time. Let's click on new thread and ask, what's my studio? You will see this answer uses bullet points and is in general a bit more structured. 
That's because Claude Triaiku is, generally speaking, a better writer than GPT-3.5. So if you want something to sound human and to respond in a better format, you should probably use Claude Triaiku. Again, to check which model you're using, click on the question mark icon, show debugger, go to the bottom of the debugger side panel, and you will see the number of prompts and response usage, plus the actual model you're using, in this example, Claude Triaiku. And just like this, you have your own chatbot powered by your data, and you can upload your custom videos if you want to, your custom knowledge base, and all of these required absolutely zero lines of coding. You can change the model whenever you want, you can change the data sources, you can use custom functions, and you can build very powerful workflows in very little time. If you want to learn more about my studio and build some more complex applications, we're going to leave some links below, and you can always check our channels. We have lots of tutorials on all difficulty levels to build something truly unique for you and your business. Hope this helps, and happy building.